Hey everybody. So we've got some serious golf course drama to go over today, and this has definitely become a new meme in public freakout lore since it went viral just a few days ago. Originally uploaded by TikTok user Kenneth Davis 8680, the video has since taken on a life of its own. I mean, I've seen this on every social media I have. I saw it all over the public freakout subreddit. It's on Twitter, excuse me, X. It's all over Instagram, Tizzy Ent did videos on it, and now multiple major publications have addressed it as well. There's a whole lot of, well, bonkers backstory to this one, and we even now have some punishment. So buckle up. All right, roll the clip. We got a Karen on the golf course right now. You leave after I don't give you a goddamn thing. I'm gonna take your clubs. This is no. Then leave. I'm not getting a fight at a golf course. Then I'm leave. Gonna go I'm gonna stand here and you can complain. Goodbye. I'm not complaining. You're the one pitching. No. You're Over the one who approached me and I asked you to no longer no speak. Wall. You took I'm her ball! Please don't speak to me. We're coming over here. You, you took her ball! Bro, you, you took her ball. Dude, I'm not gonna fight you over a If you need money for her golf balls. I'm going to, Walter. Because I'll plant you, bitch boy. Now get the f off the cart. Walter. Walter? Walter? Oh, here we go. You see that? Oh. That's a dude who's been to heaven, bitch, and you want to test God, you come get it. Shit stack. Okay, he's mentally ill. Oh. Let's move along. You think I'm mentally ill? Yes, I know you're Been to heaven. Eddie, hey, hey, what's up? He's mentally ill. Let's move along. He just started doing some. Now, obviously, this is one of those short, sweet video clips that is so absurd, so ridiculous that you have to think to yourself, there is no earthly way that this guy is just a regular guy who suddenly, like, did this and it was a one-off thing. He has to have some kind of history here, right? And what the hell did these poor golfers even do to set this off? And no helpful context, by the way, was provided by Kenneth, the original uploader, whatsoever. There was... No follow-up. We do hear the golfers accuse this guy of stealing their golf ball, and our antagonist here doesn't deny it. But why did he do that? How did they resolve this? And more importantly, what's up with this guy? Most of the initial reporting from outlets like TMZ was wholly unhelpful. They seemed, being but a humble multi-million dollar gossip news organization, totally content to simply answer these core questions with a shrug and a, eh, guess we'll never know. But we here at The Reckoning take our petty, low-stakes, interpersonal drama very seriously, so I decided to do some excavation work. One of the first clues comes from a comment left on the video by a user at Yer with four R's. The user claims to have been one of the golfers in the group of four, uh, two couples that fateful day, by which I mean a few days ago. They said, one of the girls hit her ball kind of close to him, and we drove over so she could hit it again. He then grabbed the ball and said, oh no you ain't, this is my ball now, biatch. But that was a special ball to her, so she wanted it back. Furthermore, a writer for Outkick.com named Joe Kinsey had some useful information to share as well, adding that the unbelievable confrontation had taken place at the Crooked Creek Golf Course, uh, appropriate name, in southeast Michigan, within what he says is a chaotic area of the overall course. Kinsey describes the area with which he is personally familiar as a tight tee box right next to a par 3 where about three holes come together. The screen is there so balls fly over from the par 3, don't drill you while you're on the tee box." End quote. But for a more thorough picture of the incident, we turn to the man himself, Kenneth, who recorded this video and has been so helpful in divulging the important information by not doing any kind of follow-up information whatsoever, opting out of the common story time trend altogether. But he did end up sitting down for a riveting interview with Inside Edition. Ken Davis recorded the video being seen around Walter. the world at a private oh, golf go. course in Michigan. So we kind of fear for our lives for a little bit, just how crazy the guy was. 
We never expected him to take his shirt off, but I guess he had to do what he did, and he did it. Thank you so much, Kenneth, for all those vital details. The story is essentially closed at this point. Uh, no, so obviously we're on our own here. They decided to interview the man himself, and instead of asking all of the burning questions that everyone has about the incident, um, they featured him saying one sentence uh, of absolutely nothing. So looks like we're going to have to turn elsewhere. Okay, so no thanks to Inside Edition. We now know that from the other TikTok user who was there, uh, part of this group of four. This was because this group was playing a notoriously treacherous golf course, and or part of that golf course, and one of the girls in the group hit her special ball that she uh, had sentimental value attached to a little too close to our antagonist, which set him off. He was threatening to keep the ball, but because the ball had sentimental value to this girl, they chose to drive over to him and try to get it back, or just hit it at first, and then he took it. But the big question still remains. What's this guy's deal, exactly? This can't be the first incident ever involving a guy like this, right? Happily, the Daily Mail, as well as this commenter who, to be fair, beat them to the punch, identified the man in question. Apparently with the help of esteemed 13th century explorer Marco Polo. The man you saw in this jarring exchange is 41-year-old John Reeb, a realtor, well, maybe not anymore, from Archbald, Ohio. And as we suspected, this is not his first incident. Only, it's not like this guy just had a couple other minor freakouts like this. No. John Reeb has a long, long list of public offenses. I'm talking complaints, incidents, arrests, altercations, car crashes, you name it. Honestly, it's a way longer list even than I expected, and I was expecting a relatively long one. And some of the incidents, let's call them incidents, happened recently. On July 15th, for example, only about two months ago, John Reeb got into an altercation with a man named Keith Perry, a 48-year-old who was getting into his truck to drive to work. After screaming at the man, Reeb allegedly spat on the truck and tried to spit on Keith himself, which landed Reeb with a disorderly conduct charge, a misdemeanor offense, for his transgression. Keith was, as is probably obvious from the context clues, John Reeb's neighbor. But Keith wasn't the only neighbor that Reeb terrorized in the month of July 2023. According to the Archbold Buckeye, a local newspaper for the tiny town where Reeb resides, Reeb caused another incident on July 26th, this time with a 26-year-old neighbor, that's younger than me, named Christian Greitman. He was, again, charged with disorderly conduct for his troubles. Apparently, according to Greitman and police, Reeb was wearing only his underwear when the incident occurred. This guy sure loves taking his clothes off and flexing on young dudes, I'm gathering. Well, <laughs> actually, maybe not just young dudes, because only a few days after the second neighbor incident with Greitman, Reeb got in trouble again, this time being found by police shirtless in the street and chasing after a woman's car, screaming at one in the morning. When police tried to pick him up, he sprinted home, locked the door, and refused to answer, for which he was charged with obstructing official business and menacing. And if you thought Reeb had a bad July, just wait until you hear about his August. First, he was charged with a misdemeanor warrant at the beginning of August, over which he was arrested. And then Reeb was arrested again on August 10th, when police responded to reports he was, quote, causing problems with others. And this stuff, guys, is really only just scratching the surface. On the 21st of March 2022, Reeb was indicted by a Fulton County grand jury on a fourth-degree felony trespassing charge for entering a residential home illegally while someone was likely to be present. According to the local paper, The Buckeye, the incident again involved, and I'm sure uh, this will not... Uh, at this point, surprise any of you, Reeb removing his clothing. 
The paper says, The indictment stems from an incident in which Reeb allegedly kicked in the front door of the West Mechanic Street home of John H. Ordway. Reeb allegedly entered the home, removed his sweatshirt, and left and ran across South Defiance Street. An Archbold police officer and a Fulton County Sheriff deputy went to Reeb's residence, where he was interviewed and placed under arrest. He was taken to the Correction Center of Northwest Ohio. He is currently free on $25,000 bond. And in 2022, uh, I think a little later, in June of 2022, so this is three months after the March felony, uh, he was charged again with attempting to start a riot by himself. So, I think that Reeb's extremely erratic, nonsensical actions may stem from two separate things. Uh, and let me just say that I'm positing this as a theory. This is just speculation, but it's well-founded speculation, so hear me out. The first was yet another incident from Reeb's rap sheet that happened in 2020. Apparently, Reeb ran a stop sign that year and plowed his minivan, yes, his minivan, as a single middle-aged man with no kids, into someone's Ford pickup truck. Reed was, however, not wearing a seatbelt, as well as the report relaying a suspected alcohol-induced intoxication on Reeb's part, and he was thrown from his minivan violently onto the street. He sustained some pretty serious injuries that apparently required him to be rushed to the hospital, while the Ford driver sustained only minor injuries themselves, probably because they were wearing a seatbelt. What if, dear viewer, one of the injuries he sustained from that car accident had been brain trauma, some kind of concussion? We certainly know that serious cranial injuries and concussions have a long history of causing people to act aggressively and irrationally. I've known some people like that myself, sadly. One piece of evidence that makes me think this head trauma theory might have some merit is because of a very interesting set of comments one of Reeb's old high school friends made to the Daily Mail. This got its own article. This friend said, I saw the video and I believe he was provoked. I've golfed with him. He was a good player when we were in high school. He wasn't like that in high school. It was a surprise to me. Clearly he is having some issues. He added, he played off a six handicap. I've never seen someone hit a three wood as far as he could. I believe he also worked as a groundskeeper at a golf course. End quote. So apparently back when Reeb was young, he was just a regular guy. But something happened somewhere that caused all of this. And while my first theory is that he sustained some kind of serious head injury in that fateful 2020 crash he caused by being allegedly behind the wheel with a few cold ones already in his system and no seat belt to be seen, my second theory is that he may have had a history of substance abuse that could have caused a few, um, we'll call it crossed wires. Because theory one is great and all, but it would make a lot more sense if that incident in 2020 was the start of his problematic rap sheet. Only it wasn't. And not by a long shot, because as it turns out, there was a history of drug use in Reeb's past. In 2017, for instance, Reeb was slapped with a DUI conviction for being under the influence of drugs and alcohol while behind the wheel. More importantly, he was charged twice for narcotics possession in 2015, once in July and then again in December. So Reeb may, if you catch my drift here, have had some pre-existing damage from narcotics use even before he was thrown out of the car. It could have been something as simple as marijuana possession, sure, which is still illegal to use recreationally in Ohio and most certainly was back in 2015. But dank nugs usually don't do this to someone's behavior. Quite the opposite, if anything, if we're being real. So my theory is, and again, this is just my speculation from available context, clues, and evidence, he may have been a normal guy when he was young, just a regular dude from a small town in Ohio who was great at golf. And then he perhaps got a little too involved in the hard stuff, which sent him down a mentally unhealthy path to begin with, and things perhaps got worse over the years of use until his dramatic car crash and injury in 2020, where he quite possibly sustained a serious head injury that could have exacerbated some pre-existing problems. 
This is when he seems like he goes from DUIs, speeding tickets, narcotic possessions, to getting habitually naked and terrorizing his neighbors. Okay, so now that we've created a full character profile to better understand the why, we're left with the all-important, what happened? Title of the video. Accompanying Reeb's extensive history with criminal behavior is a startling lack of any real punishment, and we've seen this many times before with some of our previous Karens and uh, just antagonist subjects, where despite having been charged numerous times with both, both misdemeanors and felonies here, uh, he doesn't seem to have served any actual hard conviction-mandated jail time. I did find an instance where he served about 150 hours of community service, though. Anyway, Reeb's actions did get him in a bit of trouble this time, and we turned to an interview with the general manager of the Crooked Creek Golf Course where this all went down to explain. Heather Ryan, the course's general manager, was interviewed by a publication you've probably never heard of called the Club and Resort Business, and she told them that the incident was actually, or had actually happened, sometime before it was posted to social media only a week ago. It actually occurred on July 24th, which would place this incident right in the middle of his two other crazy incidents from that month. Heather says that she saw the video of the incident the day after it was posted, and after showing it to all of her staff, declared that Reeb was no longer welcome at the course for any reason. The general manager also said that the incident ended when the two couples who were being screamed at drove away on their golf course or golf cart uh, and reported the behavior to an employee. The employee went out there and told Reeb to leave immediately and never come back said Heather Ryan, who noted she was gone for the day when the incident occurred. He did leave without a physical altercation. So far, I haven't seen him back, end quote. The golf course manager goes on to say that she had also issued a permanent ban from another golf course she was associated with in the general vicinity, the Cherry Creek Golf Course. Quote, I didn't really have to put up a picture of him or anything because everybody's seen the video so everyone knows what he looks like and to look out for him, she stated. She also mentioned that she c contacted the heads of other area golf courses to warn them about Reeb and his behavior, but the troubled man had apparently not been seen at any golf course in the area since that fateful day. Finally, Heather states that while our four protagonists were notable regulars at the course, Reeb was not. And in fact, Heather noted that she had never even seen him at their course before this incident. This could have been the first time he ever attended this course, and this is what happened. I did notice a lot of people also pointing out that Reeb appears to be golfing alone, which is not something that you see very often. Now, <laughs> I you can probably tell by my coverage of this, I'm not a golfer myself. Nothing against the sport, just not very good at it, uh, and I don't know much about it. So maybe that's normal for people who are really, really into golf to go golf by themselves. But my friends who are into it, they bring groups. They don't just go by themselves. So maybe that was a red flag in and of itself looking back. All right. There you have it, folks. Despite a 16-year criminal history, our man John Reeb continues to haunt the streets of his sleepy Ohio town, but does find himself markedly and firmly banned from essentially every golf course in the area, which if you're really into going golfing, has got to hurt. Plus, he's become a widely ridiculed internet meme, which has got to make a person feel very silly about themselves. Okay, that's our show for today. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it, and I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. I am always looking for new story recommendations and who knows? Yours just might be next.